my name's Tristan uh, from The Funky Bomb, Devon Analog, which is ran by my wife Ellie and myself. Uh, we're based in Exmoor in uh, North Devon in the UK. Uh, and we're a residential studio uh, focused on electronic sound. I'm pretty much grown up through record shops over the years. We ran a shop uh, from around 2000 to 2005, fell out the music game, um, had a studio behind the scenes, uh, and we basically managed to find the plot of land sat overlooking Exmoor, where we're based, probably in around like, maybe 2008, and had this stupid idea of trying to build a residential complex where people can escape the daily pools of life, um, find a studio with windows, and get away and write the idea was to sort of try and flip a 70s and 80s sort of live band type residential bass studio for guys and girls that make electronic music basically. In terms of equipment that we have here in the studio we've got a big mix of both analog and digital old and new and um, we like to mix stuff up yeah we've got to have a lot of the classic go-to bits of kit that people might use every time when they're at home but we've got a list of other pieces of outboard specifically and since that we're trying to get to sort of fill a different gap. Um, I think it's important and we were chatting about it recently the way you've got your blend between superb outboard such as the Zal AM1 console we have for a very finessed console versus your classic Boss BX80 mixers where all the classic all your sort of dance mania records will spout at the back and still sound amazing now so we're always blending between some of the best bits of gear and some of the worst bits of gear that sound amazing. In terms of outboard, we've got a lot of tube, valve, tone shaping units that we rely on, things like Chiswick Reaches, Fairchilds, like amazing, amazing, very special bits of kit that, that give you that instant, that instant factor on the record that you need. Um, we've got some quite rare Cincinnati Waldorf waves, classics like the 303 Devilfish, sort of, which is constantly being pulled off the shelf and repaired due to the amount that they use. But it's again, it's just trying to find these sort of the extra special bits, basically, as well as the classics. And I think with us here, it, uh, one of our main focuses is the maintenance side of things. So we're just really focused on. We've got a great team of engineers and people like that helping us behind techs that keep the machines going, basically. Devon Analog is a residential studio, so you come here, you stay and you play. Um, we hire in 24 hour blocks, so someone could be here for a couple of days, two to three weeks for an album project. So at the back of the studio, sort of the residential side of things, we've got three guest rooms, which can sleep up to six people. Uh, we've got a wet room, kitchen diner, like an outdoor orchard and things like that. So really when you come to record here, the whole place is yours effectively um, and you'll, you'll live and breathe the project. That, that's the idea that you turn up, shut the door, turn your phones off and it's just heads down and you live here and there's nothing better than sort of walking out your room into the space and looking out over Exmoor. My favourite piece of gear in here has probably got to be the Waldorf Wave in terms of a synth. Best two bits of equipment, probably the Zale and one CV channel, uh, which we're going to look through. And then secondly, probably a Marshall Time Modulator, which is just a zany, wacky box. The Wave itself, I'm a massive fan of, of the Wavetable synthesis, obviously, but that Detroit era. Um, so Mike Huckabee uh, came to see us from Detroit um, and just a real fascination with that deep sound versus that sort of crystal sheen. Um, and, and with a wave, the, every time you turn it on, you'll get a different result modulation wise, so you never know where you're gonna be with it. And it's those happy accidents that happen. In terms of Eurorack here at the studio, we solely use um, Busy Circuits gear. We've got two units. We have one coupe, which we use for jamming, and then we have another skiff specifically, which we use as a modulation clock source to drive various bits of kit in the studio, but primarily um, to drive the Zal CV channel. This is the main, uh, console here and this is the Zal AM1 um, so basically this is our coupe that we use for just general jamming and this secondary one here we primarily use to drive the CB channel so what this 
feature this channel actually allows you to do is you have your parameters here and then CV and gate modulation sources there. So what we would generally do and how we would use this strip is we would feed maybe perhaps a sustained held chord or a varying chord with not that many changes because we want to make the changes using the clock modulation source. So what we would do is we would either use something like Pam's workout which we would then feed into the console. Uh, the console itself does have an AR envelope within it. Um, we find that it can be a bit snappy and a bit clicky depending on what the sound source is. So we can then go into pip slope and then start to alter the envelope there. And what that would do is we'll fire the signal in and effectively we would have the volume turned down on the channel. So we would select the pam and the slope as the source to start to rhythmically chop that held chord basically to start to get some sort of groove going. Um, with the PAM it's great because we can use Euclidean style steps and rhythms, we can, we can sort of go on a randomised vibe and start to loop that to find out what we might want to use or alternatively we've been using the ASQ1 for a very precise 101 type sequence program. Quite nice you can get the idea going with that and then start to edit backwards change of the loop so at that point we're getting a nice rhythmic chop no filtering going on it's just it's just that gated effect uh, we're then using we've been basically been using uh, a single but we've done it recently where we've got the two quades uh, together so they're then sending maybe like a, a, a flowing CV um, source which we will then assign to both or either the low or the high pass so we can start to get movement, real sort of deep, chuggy type um, dub vibes going on. Down from the EQ section, we've got all of our um, all of our aux sends. Works exactly the same. You can use those as a normal desk manually, or we can start to have one-off random sort of accented pulses from Pam's workout that might just occasionally send to a tape echo or some sort of delay. We've struggled in the past finding the best sequence for this because you're either sort of stuck to that 8 or 16 step sequence where you might want to sort of go on a bit more of a freestyle journey with it. So we found that the ASQ one's perfect for that basically because we can really, you can start there or go for a much longer run. This skiff's perfect for just to be moved around the studio basically if it's to be used with sequencing any of your Zox style stuff or any synth or instrument that people want to use because it's that classic sequence style approach. Quite a lot of people are familiar with it. There's not much menu diving simple button pressing gets gets your patterns going so it's great you can just literally rip it out pull it to the point of source where you want to be and just start to get the effect basically one of the one of the key things when we were designing the studio um, is it's very easy to design a studio for yourself to use but to use for a vast array of people who will have varying levels of competencies and understanding of a recording facility and the way that they want to make their tunes and get their sound you've really got to focus on the usability and functionality of a studio. There's nothing worse than sometimes the sort of the horror stories of days of old with residential studios as you'll turn up and your induction is someone talking through, explaining to you, well, this doesn't work, that sort of works, and you don't actually get a bleep or a sound out of the machines until that evening. So with us, it's about maintaining a very easy to use system, basically. And it can be as complex as you want. You can, you can wrote, but I think what a studio needs to be is something that's, that's a blank template that anyone of any caliber can apply to the level they want to do. And I think it's importantly from, from us as an engineering perspective is being respectful of how somebody wants their record to sound. Yeah, everyone wants the dynamics, dynamics and all those aspects of it, but if they want a record to come in and sound like a scuffed up Tony DeVitt record or, or something from a jungle era, that you're still using the same principles about helping them achieve maybe the way things were made then or a touch of nostalgia, or, but, it's, but it's just having, it's having a, a toolkit basically that, that people are comfortable using.